Hey, how's it going, everybody out there? It's Pentium here for Cell Gen Studios. Just want to show you a little bit of a game here tonight to play with. Uh, it's from 1996. It's called Gordak. It was made by a company called Hoffman and Associates, the Canadian-based company, and it is not all that good of a game. It's buggy. It's cryptic. It's annoying. Very few people bought it. It's quite a rare game. Anyways. Let's get on with it. Uh, by the way, it is also very um, incompatible with Windows. I'm running uh, Windows 95 in a virtual machine right here, which is why it's going to be so uh, stuttery and so jiggly and all that. That's simply because it won't work on anything that's Windows 98 or newer. So it won't work on XP, it won't work on anything, even with compatibility modes. But I digress. It does work perfectly fine with anything up to Mac OS 9.2.2. Anyways, on with the game. <laughs>
Gorak is another photorealistic adventure game like almost all the other games back in the 90s. The cool thing about this is though is that it uses QTVR nodes. They aren't used much anymore, but it's really cool. It's pretty much rendered it into one node and you can look all the way around you. Anyways, let's keep going. One bug that I'm going to find out along this is also the virtual machine along with my screen recorder is going to play some videos kind of long, so there are a couple of workarounds you'll be seeing me do here. Nothing noticeable. So, where? By the way, you do have an inventory, surprisingly. It's just right here. You can't see it until you click randomly. The same with over here is an info panel. And of course your status. Which gets you the ability to quit, change your volume, and save. That's all you get. But this gate's locked. Please insert one Gordak dollar.
find it kind of enough, uh, amusing that the Gordak dollar looks exactly like an old Canadian bill. hotspot things. You really don't see anything here. There's nothing there you, you can see. You can just look around. There's nothing there. Oh, what's this? Now again, here's one of those things that you can only find it if you uh, are able to know how to use the hotspot function. Otherwise, you click right here and click right here. If you have the knife slip, that is. Now, there's one other thing about these four tokens you just received, and that is, they can potentially break the game. How do they break the game? Well, with the super view right here. You have four different views you can look at, and you have four tokens. But at the same time, the tram also needs two tokens. This music is getting also kind of annoying. There we go. The tram needs two tokens itself, along with the uh, super view here, which has four. If you use all four tokens in here, you're completely screwed because, well, suddenly you can't use the tram. You're stuck up here. It's game over. So, well, I guess for the hell of it, we'll waste two tokens right now. Super view. Okay, let's do it once more. Let's try uh, number four. wasn't enough of a warning to stop using your tokens, I don't know what was. Anyways, let's get out of here. Oh yeah, there's one... There's one other thing about this. You notice here on that you have the email, the personnel, the documentation. We've already seen those. There's images. Digital camera link not yet established. And again, it's another one of those hotspot moments. Um, normally, if you just look this direction here and do the uh, hotspot checker, you'll find it. Otherwise, this little tiny piece right here, give that a click. Surprise! Ready to establish interface connection with digital camera. Program initiated.
Two digital images were recovered from the camera data banks. The images may be previewed by accessing the digital image bank. Your interface has enough available memory to store an additional eight images. Great, so we're already just about to finish the first little tiny section here of the game, and I'm already being frustrated because there's four different items we've already found. You can't just find normally just by looking around. You actually have to cheat to find them. Oh yeah, images. Let's look at that too. Uh, image one. Oh, it's just the exact same little thing. It's just much smaller. Well, that's no help at all. Number two. It's like the bottom. It's the same thing. Oh well. can't use it. Oh yeah, because this game is linear. That does nothing. And another frustrating puzzle of many. Somewhere around in this game here, there's four different numbers. You gotta somehow just find, or either you pull them out of your ass, just doing by uh, trial and error. Um, I've owned this game for 15 years now, and I didn't realize how to pretty much do anything in this game up until here, until about 2000 when I received one text file which gave me just a walkthrough of the game. And through that, I pretty much was able to solve almost everything. Anyways, the combination. Yeah, I was kind of...
bummed out too when I first got that to work and realized it wasn't going to work. Damn it. sounds like he's terrified while he's running. Of course, when he's running that fast, he must be running for his life. And our next puzzle. Use Christopher's glasses to read the puzzle on the wall. Now for those stupid sunglasses it took, well, you actually had to cheat to find. Again, this is one of those frustrating puzzles that's just absolutely stupid and next to impossible to figure out. You look at it and you're just like, okay, I'm supposed to do something here. I have three, six, nine, twelve positions and I have basically twelve different uh, letters here. And they have to be in some order. Um, again, I didn't figure this one out here until the year 2000. Before that, I'd just been scribbling down on paper all the different iterations there could be. But... The final one that actually works is to pass through this border place. Oh, no. Place. The passwords in correct order. Does it work? Yes, it does. Sounds so stupid. But oh well, in you go. Again, this is one of those spots where the game just, just tries to um, end it early. If I were to go left and in through this door here, I would be taken all the way back to the very beginning of the game, and I'd lose everything in my inventory. It's basically start over. Normally, I just pretty much reload my save and go back from there. This door, however, leads into the labyrinth. The most annoying thing, I'm quite sure you do more circles in here than anywhere else in the entire game. Anyways, you for some odd reason need the magnifying glass. Again, one of those items that you just happen to randomly find if you use the hotspot. Of course, there's nothing here to magnify yet. But if for some reason you thought of whipping out your magnifying glass while well, at this far corner here, at the very back of the maze, you'd notice there's a hot spot here. It contains a maze, telling you to go that way. Probably this way here? I'm not really sure. Let's just go that way, and then come back here. Okay, so we went that way. Congratulations. I don't see anything's changed, so let's go back to the map and see. Maybe we got it wrong or something. No, 
surprise, surprise, the map has changed. Now you have to go another way. And then, of course, we're just going to loop back here because I'm starting to see a pattern. Now we've obeyed the map again and gone that way. Let's go back to it. Right now, where shall we go, Mr. Looking Glass? That way? We just went that way. That's just going the opposite direction. Right, so if you are obeying the maps, you're going to look this way and realize, boom, there's suddenly a room the way you just went. And a payphone. to return to the beginning of the maze. Don't forget the gas can. So I can solve the puzzle on the wall there. So I can pick this up. Okay, so we can do the logical thing and pretty much walk out this door and head right back. Or, if you want to do it the hard way, you click on this. And basically, the hard way here is you solve the stupid puzzle. And it'll automatically teleport you to the back to the other end of the maze. Of course, it takes much longer to finish this than to just walk back, so screw it. And it closed my inventory, that little bastard. Just like turbo.
Turbo speed on me. Here, let me click that again. Now that's blocked, but it's actually over here now. It goes right back, I see. Um, like I said, this game is totally screwed. Now that works. <laughs> now let's get out of this stupid section of the game. Next level! Congratulations, we've crash landed in the world of Minecraft, it feels. I like how it makes you go right to this door, even though this door is locked. This room sucks. All four corners look exactly the same. I hate Hoffman for this. And if you're lucky like I am, on the first try, you can actually get the right room to go upstairs.
because you're going to miss it. Even with the video sped up a little bit because I'm using the virtual machine here, even when it's slow, I still have to go do that a couple of times know what the hell it's saying. But I've played this game enough now, so I know what it says. What did it say? Rise and shine at 7, go to bed at 11, eat lunch at noon, and take a nap at 2. Huh, there should be audio here. Oops! Oh yeah, and no game without game shows is complete without sleaze. For those who have not played the game, I strongly recommend you go outside the front door. That way you know where the hell you're going. Because again, we have to go into this stupid room down here. Anyways, t 
still work. go now let's get this finished ah what are you doing there we go could you imagine it actually took me um two years to fully figure this one out Go to it.
Log in? No! No! I'm quitting this game. I... Ugh. Now you see the frustrating thing. And the other thing about this. Now that I lost the game there at the boss battle, my save is deleted. So if I'd saved anywhere before that, it doesn't matter. All of a sudden, I have to start all the way from the very beginning of the game. Now, of course, let's go off for a bit of time here. This took about almost 50 minutes to do. And honest to God, it took me 13 years to get to that point. Even, I got managed to get most of it done after I'd gotten the walkthrough, but still, it was those last two puzzles that are the most killer part of the whole game. It just makes no sense. Um, well, there you go. You've now pretty much seen the whole game. If you can find a copy of it anywhere, I recommend you get it. It is kind of cool, because it uses some very, um unique technologies of the time between Macromedia Director and uh, QuickTime QTVR files. And, yeah, it does kind of work on a VMware player. Anyways, for uh, CellGen Studios, this is Pentium here signing off and hoping you enjoy the rest of your day, your rest of your night, or uh, the rest of your flight, depending on where you are. Or, Anyways, take care.